Hello everyone, Darkizer here, welcoming you back to another episode of my Space Engineers survival playthrough. After the last episode, where I had, shall we say, an inauspicious end, and I do have to remember to change the titles of these things so that the save games actually save where they should, but after my inauspicious ending last episode, I had decided to go out and try to recover my body, if only because I had some equipment that I did not want to part with. Unfortunately, my body locator has timed out, so I thought I would take a flight, and it was at about 7 kilometers from Cliffside. So I thought I'd come out to right around this area and see if I couldn't locate something. Possibly smoldering wreckage of my ship so that I could try to salvage that as well. But I'm not seeing anything. And of course the, the chance of actually spotting my body is pretty, pretty slim. But I thought I would try and there was also a unidentified signal, so I thought I would go ahead and take a look at that as well. Nope, I'm not seeing the cargo pack that is normally left after you despawn. So I guess it's RTB and go from there. For today's episode, because I did lose my fighter in the last episode, I wanted to go ahead and experiment with and demonstrate the use of projectors. I am very fortunate in the fact that the model that I wanted to build has been saved as a blueprint, and so I wanted to demonstrate how that can be done. Let me make sure that I'm not going to have any other horrifying crashing incidents. It's the definition of ironic when your recovery vehicle needs to be recovered. That's just not right. And actually, now that I think about it, I should probably make a blueprint of this when I get back to base, just in case I have to go out and print another one. I do need a little bit more reverse thrust though. And it occurs to me, let me take a look at this. I think I have one of my aft thrusters facing the wrong way because I'm not seeing it doing anything when I'm going forward. I think that right hand thruster is facing the wrong way. Now this is what happens when you're working with new models. I have heard that there is a way to automate your landing and docking procedure, and it probably has something to do with a uh, remote control, since with a remote control unit, you can pre-program different commands uh, moving to certain waypoints and so on and so forth. So I may actually investigate that with regards to returning to base. Simply putting a remote control on all of my ships, all of my flying ships anyway, and then setting a point 200 meters up or what have you so that I know that I'm going to clear all of the uh, cliffs and so forth. And I may experiment with that. Since I play mostly in survival mode and mostly solo, and that's primarily because when the game was in early development, it had so many problems with multiplayer. And although it, it is now in formal release, it's still not perfect yet, especially with regards to multiplayer. 
I do like automating systems to relieve a lot of the tedium from some of the, the more basic things. I'm going to have to put this camera in a different location. Not a good spot now that it's blocked by the reactor. I also have to remember to turn off turn off the build and repair when I'm not using it on my way back. Yeah, I'm sure that this is painted incorrectly. These appear to be working fine. More shooting at the neighbors. Uh, let me see. I don't know if these are actually going to provide enough thrust to be worth the effort. But we're going to find out. Is that how I... Yep, one, two, three, four. And the other one is black, so we'll... to follow my sense of symmetry. So as I was saying, now we get to play with projectors. One of the things that you have to be aware of when working with a projector is the fact that projectors will only... Oh, I lost my machine gun too. Darn it. Projectors will only project to the block size that the projecting block is. So if I use a large projector block, I can only project large block projections. However, there is a way around that. Now let me, I want to make sure. Okay, now the build and repair will go ahead and weld this up. We'll go ahead and we'll speed it along a little bit. And now I need to go and get a grinder that I had run off in the assembler. Thank you very much. Get rid of those. Okay. Now what we are going to do We're going to take the advanced rotor part off, and I thought that I had made this a basic rotor, so that's my mistake. And I'm going to put a I'm going to put a control panel right there, just to make it easier to work with. And now. We go to the advanced rotor and we can, there is a command for attaching a small rotor head. That only works if no rotor head is present, which is why I had to go ahead and grind away the one that existed there before. And now that is a small rotor head, which means that we can now attach a small block to it.
And now we go ahead and grab our projector. Now, projectors are one of those things that seem to cause people an awful lot of consternation, and I will freely and openly admit that I am not an expert. The first time that you place a projector, you're going to get this four-sided, and let me get a little closer to it, you're going to get this four-sided plus sign sort of a gizmo here. This is not the front of the projector. It is misleading. The front of the projector is actually this bit. The part where you have a bar going straight up and down and that part is the top. So when it comes to placing the projector, this needs to be in the front, that's at the top. Now that gets welded up and because it's all attached to the grid, it's all powered and so on and so forth. Oh, that's not the one that shot me down. I'm going to have to remember the arm transport carons are a much better deal for me because I can take them out relatively easily without dying. So now we go into the projector and we're going to go into blueprints and we're going to find the Zephyr 2 and we're going to go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. Now I immediately, I doggone it, forgot to turn off my build and repair. And one of the problems when you first do this and you have a build and repair system, I'm going to go ahead and remove that projection because it already started welding stuff. And unfortunately, well, we'll just do this one the old fashioned way. Alrighty. Now let's try that again without the interference of the build and repair system. Okay, now I'm actually going to turn the opacity of my HUD down even more than it is now. It's been so long since I had to do this. There we go. We're going to make the background almost completely transparent so that we can see through things. Now as you can see, there's no way that this ship is going to get welded primarily because the projector is right in the middle of it. So what we need to do, and this is common, this is a common problem. What we're going to do, you have your horizontal offset, which will move your projection from left to right. And all of this is from relation of the projector. It's just like a sensor. Whichever way the sensor is facing, that's the front. So this right is to the right as you're facing the projector. and so you need to adjust things accordingly. Vertical offset, of course, is up and down. Forward offset is what we're really concerned with here because we need to move the projection off of the projector. Now you can see in the lower right hand side there's some data dealing with the projector including on that third line warning projection out of bounds. That means that the, the projection will not be built using normal you cannot weld using any of the blocks for the projection so we're going to I'm going to bring this up so that it's not sitting right on the deck 
and then I'm going to try to bring the forward offset back a little bit. A projection has to be in contact with a grid in order for it to actually build anything. So what we can do, and this is going to be a little bit tricky primarily because the front of this vehicle is all sloped armor and you cannot, you can't put a flat block up against a sloped piece of armor. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach something that we can actually bring the projection up to that would be a valid connection block. And what we might want to do, I could Might be easier to turn it all the way around. Now, as you can see, the roll switch will make the projection actually roll and you can roll it either clockwise or counterclockwise along its axis. Yaw will actually, and yaw and pitch I think are actually misnamed and it could be because of a language barrier between Czechoslovakia and us. But yaw actually will make the vehicle uh, more vertical and we'll actually have it going up and down, which we refer to in America as pitch. Yaw, uh, or pitch rather, is what they use to rotate the thing on a horizontal plane, and we normally refer to that as yaw. So I think, they, I think that there's a slight miscommunication there. Now we can use our horizontal offset to bring that back, and we can use our forward offset to bring this back and our vertical we can bring that up and we still are projecting out of bounds which means nothing's going to get welded however now I can take a look at what's going on over here and perhaps the best way to do this is standing on top of this thing unfortunately I don't have an antenna hmm Thinking now might not be a bad idea to put might might not be a bad time to put in an antenna. Since I need one anyway. Make my life a little bit easier. wonder how much hydrogen I have left. Oh, apparently not much. That's right, because I lost my bottles. Nope, wanted to make sure that my antenna was not painted a color that would not function. Well, until then... What we need to do is bring this back a couple of blocks. So we're going to bring this back. At 4, this message disappears, and that means that now we have managed to bring the grid that the projector is attached to in contact with the grid that the projection would be welded to if it were all attached as one unit. And this is how the thing works. Now, if I take my welder, I can go ahead and I can come under here and I can actually, if I have all the correct components, I can actually weld this block. And one of the commands that you can have 
for your projector is to show only buildable and I currently have this turned off so it's showing the entire projection whether I can build it or not you can click on this and it will show you only the blocks that you can build next so it will show you what is adjacent to what you've already got going on so you know what you can weld and then of course every time you weld something then what that does is it brings more blocks into view because you now have more blocks in contact with other things and of course I don't have all of the material necessary to weld all of this stuff so I'm going to turn the BAR back on and I will let the BAR take care of the welding for me and now what is going to happen and I'm going to go ahead and turn the projection back on so that we can see it now what is going to happen is at whatever state that I blueprinted the vehicle that's going to get welded in that state so uh, as you can see because I had built it in creative mode uh, it had fully charged batteries so fortunately for me I'm going to get batteries however they will only have a partial charge since that's the way batteries work when they're welded however if the thrusters were turned on at the point that I saved the blueprint then the thrusters will automatically be turned on and any other hot bar commands that you had set up should also transfer over now something that should be noted when you're doing this subgrids will not be welded so if you have something that has wheels on it the wheel mounting will be welded the wheel will not anything that has a piston on it uh, the piston base will be welded the piston head and anything on the end of it will not be so this works great for uh, small scale vehicles mass produced vehicles anything that is uh, disposable or expendable and I hope to actually be using drones for that in the relatively near future and in the case of my fighter I think that the uh, although I would not consider that fighter to be expendable it's not exactly a huge loss of resources the fact that I had it shot out from under me obviously flaw in my design probably I died because the cockpit is too exposed and so I'm probably gonna have to make some changes but we'll see about that obviously this is gonna take a while to weld up so we're going to call this here I do need to put some more light in here but now we have our garages set up much better I have moved everything to the point that I can actually get all of my vehicles in and out without having to worry about anything crashing into anything else I'm going to have to think about putting the projector actually underneath the shroud if I can figure out how to get Herm if you put a conveyor block in there set the rotor on top and go ahead and put the small rotor head on there and turn things around just so might be able to get it to the point where the connector from the fighter actually lines up with the connector on the base which means all I'd have to do after I make the projection is just click on the locking function you will have to disconnect the vehicle from the grid after you get done having everything welded so what I will have to do is I will have to grind away one of these blocks and that's perfectly fine many vehicles are built with a merge block uh, on the end of them or a connector if I could figure out how to do that so that all you have to do is detach the merge block or detach the connector when you're done so that you don't have to worry about grinding anything and so on and so forth I have seen setups on the workshop where uh, automated they basically refer to them as 3d printers uh, automated print setups 
will go ahead and print the ship and then after a timer block has run its course and they they basically pay attention to how long it takes for the the vehicle to be printed and they set a timer block accordingly uh, after a after the sufficient amount of time has passed the timer block triggers a small piston and a small grinder will actually come up and automatically detach the ship and boy talk about automated ship production well that's some interesting shadow work going on over there so for my next episode I'm going to try to level out the road a little bit here so that I can take the rover out with less damage to it and then I'm going to see where we go next with the base I still like the idea of actually trying to incorporate this structure into the Goliath flyer as I have called it and if that means that I basically wind up building a basement underneath here that I use to build thrusters onto and then I prepare for the eventuality of grinding away the entire hill and flying the entire base out well that would be pretty dramatic but I'm getting to the point now where I have sufficient amount of resources that I'm not worried about can I make another 10,000 steel plates or what have you that being the case oh it's finally welding up my antenna that being the case as with most things in space engineers once you get to the point where you have this many resources now you start reaching for larger and larger projects and since my eventual goal is to have the large flying mobile base that's going to be where I'm headed next thank you all for your support thank you for the subscriptions and for the comments and the constructive criticism as always likes are appreciated and subscriptions doubly so this is Darkizer signing off thank you for watching